call the member for Newtown. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I wanted to rise to offer the Greens wholehearted support for the amendments that we've seen in uh, the Legislative Council coming back to this chamber. Um, they're clearly in line with the key asks from stakeholders that have been working uh, for a long time and advocating for a long time in the space around domestic violence and will go a long way to improving outcomes for victim survivors of domestic and family violence in this state. I want to give a particular shout out to Hayley Foster and the team at Women's Safety New South Wales and Liz Schnell and the team at Domestic Violence New South Wales for all of their really impressive and strong advocacy and expertise and without which um, these important reforms would not have been achieved. This bill is the result of decades of work from both of these organisations, these women, but also advocates for domestic violence reform in our justice system across the state, and I commend them for their tenacity and their support. I also want to acknowledge the work of my colleague um, and, and fellow feminist in the other place, Abigail Boyd, who is the Greens domestic violence spokesperson in New South Wales, and also her team, Alicia, Matthew and Daniel, for their incredible efforts in getting some vital amendments across the line. We all know, and as, as we, we're aware, um, it's one thing to be able to provide a level of, of, of commitment and support to these ideas, but to go about the complex effort of drafting the amendments and negotiating and trying to get those amendments up is a whole new level of complexity, and I understand um, the, the heavy lifting and acknowledge the heavy lifting done by Abigail and her office, in relation to working then with the Minister, uh, with the Animal Justice Party, with others in the Upper House to actually deliver on these amendments for the sector. Uh, the sector has been calling for these changes for so long and sometimes what it takes is a fierce uh, feminist and activist that is committed to the idea of seeing these reforms in the other place and the Greens certainly have that um, in my colleague Abigail Boyd. And we absolutely feel that um, the strength of this bill has been brought about in many ways uh, uh, improved because of the fact that we've seen a collaborative working arrangement between uh, the Minister and the Attorney-General and um, the other parties involved in discussions around this bill. I wanted to um, point and highlight particularly the Greens amendment in relation to to inserting a new provision for the court that would direct parts of domestic violence offence proceedings to be held in camera. Currently in New South Wales, all domestic violence hearings take place in an open court, which obviously means that for victim survivors, they are often faced with the prospect of giving evidence about deeply personal matters, including violence and abuse in, in front of family and friends and the defendant's family and friends, um, and in fact, anyone else who happened to wander into the courtroom. Obviously, this can be extremely confronting and invasive and can significantly impact whether or not they Intend court, attend court at all. This amendment means that victim survivors now have the right to have their matters heard in a closed court, removing significant barriers which currently deter many women and many people attending court. This will vastly improve the justice outcomes for women and increase the likelihood of offenders being successfully held to account. This is an incredibly important reform. The other important reform that I think is crucial to highlight uh, which, which was um, originally a Greens amendment, was eventually moved by the government, and I hope shows the level of collabor uh, collaboration and commitment to the idea of this reform, something that has been decades uh, being advocated for uh, uh, by key stakeholders, by domestic violence advocates and, and, and uh, feminist activists within this space. And this amendment means that defendants who are not represented can no longer directly cross-examine the victim survivor on the evidence that they have given against them. Certainly, certainly, I would like to say, and I don't, I don't say this lightly, I think that with this amendment we see um, a loosening of the hold of the patriarchy on our justice system. And I think that that is a very welcome thing for women uh, and a very welcome thing for victim survivors in this, uh, in this state. It's clear that a perpetrator being given the opportunity to directly interrogate their victim survivor in open court is unacceptable, but until now it has been accepted practice and it's time that the victim survivor reaches the courtroom. By the time they do, they've already had to relive the experience and the idea of also being interrogated in a public forum by their abuser is obviously extremely distressing and it's one of the main reasons why a lot of women have chosen not to go to court and pursue charges. These significant barriers to justice have now been removed and again I want to commend all of those that have been involved, Women's Safety New South Wales, Domestic Violence New South Wales, the many, many DV advocates and feminists and allies 
for getting us here. I want to acknowledge the work of the minister um, and the Attorney General in relation to um, where we are with this bill and say it is also the bill that will mean that animal abuse is now recognised as a form of domestic violence in New South Wales. And I think that is an absolute credit and a win as well in terms of providing people with protection in this state.